Ludicrous Feed is proudly sponsored by Carlo Pedata, Kobo Car Insurance, and Wallbox EV Chargers. Hey everyone and welcome to my garage and in this video I will be showing you my home charging setup for my EVs that is the BYD SEAL and the Tesla Model Y. Okay so in this corner of my garage I have the Generation 3 Tesla wall connector which for full financial disclosure I paid for with my own money and also paid an electrician to come and install for us as well. This was not redeemed using Tesla credits. The Tesla referral program at the time I bought this charger was actually suspended for the time being. So when I used to own a Tesla Model 3 and when the Tesla Model S was parked here, I would use a program called Charge HQ, which was developed here in Australia to charge the Teslas. Now, because I no longer have a Tesla parked in my parking spot, the Tesla Gen 3 wall connector is not compatible anymore with Charge HQ because it's not OCPP compatible which means you can't actually use the Tesla Gen 3 wall connector with Charge HQ to charge a non-Tesla EV with excess solar. You can of course still use the Tesla Gen 3 wall connector to charge a non-Tesla EV, uh, and there is scheduling as well, which I'll go through at the end of this video. But first I wanna focus on my other charger, which is the Wallbox Pulsar Max. And for full financial disclosure, this product was provided complimentary by Wallbox for me to test and review, and the installation was also covered by Warbox as well. And Warbox, of course, are also sponsors of the Ludicrous Feed YouTube channel. So the cord of the charger can be neatly wrapped around and placed like that on top of the unit. And it's a type two plug because most modern EVs these days are type two. Uh, it comes with a cap like that. You can leave that on for protection. I normally just have it off just for convenience. So there it is there. It'll be the cap off. It just uh, hangs loosely there and you can just sort of uh, leave it like that when it's not in use. And there's also a separate mount which you could install elsewhere on the wall if you wanted to. And that way you can just latch your plug onto it as an additional option. And this particular cord is five meters long for my charger, so you could pull it around the car if you need to. Uh, there is a seven meter option as well. And this Wallbox Pulsar Max is capable of supplying up to 22 kilowatts as a three phase installation and also as a seven kilowatts single phase installation. There are actually no physical buttons at all around the Pulsar Max. And it's literally about the size of my hand. And all the operations are software based via the app, which I'll show you very shortly. And in this spot here is our Tesla Model Y, which has been happily uh, using the Wallbox Pulsar Max over the last three months I've had this product. It's been very happy charging mostly at night using the cheaper off-peak tariff. For full disclosure, I'm still with PowerShop because I'm still enjoying the many credits I have. Uh, thanks to our generous viewers who've used my referral over the years, so thank you very much. Details will be in the video description below. Okay, so now that the sun has come out, I will now demonstrate the major benefit of the Pulsar Max, which is the Eco Smart Charging, that is using excess solar on a day like today. So there we go, the uh, Pulsar Max is now in its full glory using Eco Smart Charging, and that is using excess solar from my solar panels to charge the car. There it is receiving 4.1 kilowatts from solar and supplying the car at 4.2 kilowatts. Occasionally 0 0.1, 0 0.2 kilowatts from the grid, just to balance the net metering across the phases. But uh, that is a nice feeling, uh, receiving mostly green power to charge the vehicle. By the way, the Wallbox app is fantastic, lots of functionality. Um, and for those of you who need you know, the um, stats for tax purposes or whatever, or for your employer, uh, you can actually um, export all this data as a CSV file or an Excel file for accounting and tax purposes. And you can see all the recent sessions as well, which is uh, really, really fantastic. And you can filter by month, by year, or by week. So yeah, really, really handy. And then furthermore, you can see since you plugged in how much energy you've uh, used uh, and how much of that was green, i.e. self-generated from the solar, which is great. And then you can set your power limit as well from six amps to 32 amps. And also you can set the schedule too. So for example, now the sun is hiding behind a cloud, it's dropped to two kilowatts um, with the set scheduling you know, once um, it's done charging from the sun, say it starts to rain or becomes cloudy or uh, sunlight is over, then you can set your charging schedule. There you go. 
you can edit the schedule, start and end time, um, weekdays, weekends, every day, um, Monday to Sunday, and then save that as well. So really handy and automatically goes onto the schedule at night time once um, the daylight hours are over. And what's great too is that you're not limited just to one schedule, you can actually um, set multiple schedules as well. So there you go, add another schedule on top of that. So let's say I want to add another schedule like that, add that. So now I've got two schedules. I know they're clashing, but uh, this is just an example. You can set that according to the cheapest tariff for your house or business or workplace. Okay, so you could see there are also different colors around this ring of the Warbox Max. So this teal turquoise color means that it's waiting for green energy. Uh, before you saw when it was charging, it was blue. Now, if there's not enough green energy for 30 seconds, um, then it will just go back to standby for two minutes uh, before it searches for green energy again. And if there's not enough green energy for 30 seconds, then it'll go back to standby again. Now, of course, being a solar charger or using excess solar power means that you also need to install a power meter. Now, that's an additional cost, of course, but it's definitely worth it. That will hook up with your inverter and uh, tell the Warbox system basically how much excess solar power there is. So that, of course, can be sorted out by your electrician. OK, so while we're waiting for green energy, let's go through some of the settings. Now, the main settings for solar charging is on the upgrades. And I usually look at Eco Smart, and there's a choice between Eco Mode and Full Green. Now, before we delve into which option to choose, it's important to understand that the Pulsar Max has a minimum required current of 6 amps before it will start charging your vehicle. That translates to approximately 1.4 kilowatts for a single phase setup and 4.1 kilowatts for a three phase setup. If you choose Full Green Mode, then that requirement of 6 amps must be fully met by excess solar production from your array. If you have a large solar system that regularly produces more than 1.4 kilowatts or 4.1 kilowatts in surplus energy for a single or three phase installation respectively, then I suggest you use full green mode. If you however have a smaller solar array, then that is where eco mode is handy. In eco mode, that excess solar threshold drops to 2 amps, which translates to 0.5 kilowatts for a single phase setup or 1.4 kilowatts for a three phase setup. It will still output a minimum total of 6 amps to your car, but it will top up the additional 4 amp difference with grid electricity. Obviously, if your system can then generate more surplus as the day progresses and there is more sunlight, then there will be less requirement on the use of grid electricity to generate the minimum 6 amps required. So in summary, small solar systems which generate surplus energy of under 1.4 kilowatts or 4.1 kilowatts for single and three phase installations respectively, then use eco mode. For larger systems, use full green. So as you can see from my Tesla app, 1.6 kilowatts of solar being produced. It's um, actually quite cloudy at the moment. The sun's hiding behind the clouds and the home is requiring 1.4 kilowatts. So there's not really much left indeed for uh, the car. Now, obviously, if you've got a larger solar system and you regularly get over four kilowatts, then obviously I would choose full green uh, to fully utilize um, excess solar production to charge your cars during the day with the Pulsar Max. OK, let me show you some more options. So there is a halo light standby toggle. So if you don't want the lights to show on the Warbox unit, so turn that on um, and the lights will disappear after a while. There is auto lock. So, for example, this Warbox unit is in an apartment car park. Uh, or a strata complex and you don't want someone else to use it, um, then you can toggle that auto lock function and you can also lock out um, a set amount of time as well. So if I turn that on, uh, you can set one minute all the way up to 60 minutes and that is the allocated time after the charging session before it locks itself so that no one else can use it. And then you're probably asking how do you unlock it? Well, you can always manually lock it like that. See that? And no one else can use it. And then you can just unlock it like that again. And there you go. And of course, you must have a Warbox account, Warbox app, and a mobile device to do anything for the Warbox Pulse on X. Okay, so not much sun, but uh, you can always force the charger to just kick off. Now, the Tesla Model Y behind me has a maximum charging rate of 11 kilowatts. My house is able to supply 22 kilowatts to this unit because it's a three phase system, and the unit itself allows for 22 kilowatts maximum. Uh, and of course, you've always got to find the weakest link. So in this case, the Tesla Model Y is the weakest link, which has a maximum charging rate of 11 kilowatts. So if I just press start now, 
Okay, it'll automatically start charging. There it is there, flashing green on the car, which means it's all good. Then you can see the rate ramping up. And there we are, it's receiving the full 11 kilowatts sum from the grid. Now this is a bit of a misnomer, this green. I think it's actually receiving power from my Tesla Powerwall 2, uh, which thinks that it's green. It is, but it's actually receiving it from the battery. Yeah, so I had to actually turn off Charge HQ as well. So make sure you've got anything else controlling uh, the vehicle or the charger, like Charge HQ. So there's no conflict between the Wallbox, Pulsar Max and anything else. So there you go, back to my Tesla app. And yes, it is drawing energy from uh, the power wall as well at the same time. All right, so this was just for demonstration purposes. I don't actually want to charge the car at full 11 because uh, it's not the best time to charge the vehicle at that rate because it's uh, quite expensive at this time. So I'm going to stop it. There we are, it stopped charging. And then you can just resume the eco charging again by pressing that button. Okay, so it's a momentary pause for it to work out how much energy is in the system and then it'll go back to waiting for green energy. Until next time, the sun is not hiding behind a cloud. Right, so now I've got the Pulsar Max plugged into the BYD seal, but of course the same principles apply. The beauty of the Warbox Pulsar Max is of course that it's uh, EV agnostic, so it doesn't matter that it's now a BYD seal versus a, a Tesla Model Y, it'll still charge. So let's press start because there's still no sun, but let's just press start to see what maximum charging rate we can get just by charging. So there it is, flicking to blue, which means that it's charging. Okay, so how much is the car getting? It's getting 7.1 kilowatts, which is as advertised. Perfect, all coming from the grid, because like I said, there's no sun currently. Hopefully, the sun will reappear, then I can demonstrate to you that it still does work with solar charging with the seal. So there you go, there is actually some energy coming from green energy, which is uh, the stored energy from the battery. So I guess that's one way around some of the minimum requirements of the Pulsar Max, where uh, if you just press start charging, if you've got a Powerwall 2 battery, then it'll pull some of the energy from the battery, because I guess ultimately it's stored green energy anyway in the battery from the solar panels. Unfortunately, inside the car, it's only receiving 6.3 kilowatts, whereas from the charger, it's you know, pulling 6.9, 7.1. So I guess there are some losses en route from the EVSC uh, to the car. Okay, so we're back on a bright sunny day and the BYD seal is plugged in. And the Warbox app says that uh, it's charging on EcoSmart. And unfortunately it's only getting 1.7 kilowatts. So yeah, that's a bit unusual, even though I've got actually quite a bit of surplus coming from the solar panels. So if we look at my Tesla app here, 6.4 kilowatts coming from solar. The car's receiving 1.7 plus some going to the home and an extra 4.4 is going back to the grid, which is unfortunate. You can, of course, manually override it by pressing stop like that. And then just press start again. And then if you do that, it'll go the full 7 kilowatts. Then you'll see that you get 6.9 kilowatts coming from solar and battery and a little bit coming from the grid. So that's one way to override that slow charging rate just using the sun, which is a bit strange. I mean, it doesn't happen for Tesla. Let me just show you. Okay, so we're plugged into our Tesla Model Y with Warbox, and you can see that it's ramping up already. Now going to 4.8 kilowatts with full green. So that is probably an issue that has to be brought up with Warbox and BYD. I know this is charging on three phase and BYD single phase, but it should still be able to pull more power than 1.9 kilowatts. Interesting. And just to wrap up, I should talk about connectivity as well. So you uh, can connect to your charger via Wi-Fi. However, for some of the finer controls, you do need Bluetooth, which you can set up pretty easily. And then from there, you can access some of the other controls. For example, some of the settings in advanced options, as we discussed earlier, and also upgrades like PowerBoost and EcoSmart requires Bluetooth connectivity. And finally, the Warbox Pulsar Max has OCPP functionality, which means that you can use uh, other software to control the charger and that can be enabled quite easily through a toggle there. And then from there, enter the controlling software's URL 
In this situation, I've got the charge HQ URL inserted there, and I've actually used charge HQ to control this wall box connector. Handy for, I guess, commercial enterprise where you want to control multiple charges from one central point via external software, so that's where it's quite handy. And Charge HQ also has other functionality, which I may touch on in a future video. Okay, so let's do a scheduling test. Uh, it's currently set for 4.25 p.m. It's uh, 4.24 at the moment, and the BYD seal is actually powered down, so let's just make sure that it does work when it clicks over to 4.25. Okay, you can hear the BYD beeping behind me there. Even though it's turned off, it's okay. Didn't go to sleep. Looks like it's charging all right. Let's confirm. I love that, charging on schedule. That's brilliant. And there it is receiving seven kilowatts as planned. So great to see that the charging for the BYD seal works, even though the car is turned off. It knows what it's doing. Okay, now for the Tesla Gen 3 part of the video, and uh, let's just test to make sure that the BYD seal can use the Gen 3 wall connector to charge. So when you plug it in, if you set it up correctly, it'll say non-Tesla vehicle. I do have a schedule on it at the moment, but you can override that by just pressing start charging. Beeps and boops from the car. More beeps and boops. And then the charger itself, flashing green. And on the Tesla app, seven kilowatts for the electric vehicle, 7.1, which is the BYD seal. But sadly in the car, still only getting 6.3 kilowatts, much like the Wallbox Pulsar Max. So there must be some losses between the EVSC and the car. So for now, you can only set one charging schedule for the Tesla Gen 3 wall connector. So go to settings, and then you go to uh, vehicle charging, and you can see there's only uh, allocation for one charging schedule, unlike what you saw with the wall box. And as I said, because uh, this is a non-Tesla vehicle, you can't actually use another program like Charge HQ with a Tesla Gen 3 wall connector to utilize excess solar charging. Now, in order to allow non-Tesla EVs to use the Tesla Gen 3 wall connector, you have to go into the back end and then go to access controls and make sure allowed vehicles for charging, all vehicles selected, that is all vehicles and then you'll be good to go. Now I have done a full review of the Tesla Gen 3 wall connector before, so check out that video. And I can confirm that the BYD seal will be woken up by the Tesla Gen 3 wall connector at the scheduled charging time. All right, everyone, that is my home EV charging setup with both the Wallbox Pulsar Max and also the Tesla Gen 3 wall connector for both my BYD seal and the Tesla Model Y. Hope you've enjoyed that video. Make sure you leave a comment as to your own charging setup I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy charging.